So, uh, hey, you ever find out what she did to that meatball sandwich? No. You want it now? You, you watched it? I'll never tell. Yeah, I totally watched it. Yeah. I almost didn't. Yeah, I, I want to know. No, I, I don't, I don't want to know. Yes, I, yeah, no. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, 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 yes, yes, no, no, yeah. If it helps, she's not my stepdaughter. Tell you what, so as I don't blow the rating on this channel, just whisper it into my ear, okay? Okay, I love this. Stay, stay. Do you like fun and adventure? Then sit back and enjoy the Brothers Not Lovers as they discuss all things movies. What's overrated or underrated? What makes you go really? Or how dare you? Or even just simply how funny this movie can be. You have the insightful, intuitive, Davey, who is awesome. And you have the film bestie, Josh. He's there. Hi, Davey. I'm awesome. This is Josh. The film bestie. And I'm awesome. No. And this is really where we notice certain things in movies that make us go, really? Whoa. We could do that someday, just something that made us go, whoa. What are you talking about? Like Deep Blue Sea when the shark grabs him. Whoa. That is a stupid noise you're making. Ugh. Sounds like weird. I hate you. For our first, really, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite childhood movies. Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. Fantastic movie starring Christina Applegate mm. during her Married with Children days where their mother goes on a trip with her boyfriend for an entire month to Australia because she's 37 and she needs a break. I'm 41. Screw you. And for that summer, while she's on break in Australia, she hires a babysitter and the first day the babysitter dies. <laughs> That's funny. And there's a couple of things that make me go really in this movie as an adult, but one that I kind of feel needs to be addressed. At one point in the movie, the main character, Sue Ellen, she gets a job pretending to be an adult, even though she's only 17, and she's having a little bit of a feud with a co-worker at this fashion company because she came along and accidentally stole her job. She was right on top of that, Rose. Yeah. And it turns out that the girl that hates her at that company is the older sister of her boyfriend, who delivers chili dogs. In a world where they deliver chili dogs, why don't they do that here? But, at one point, the boyfriend is trying to get her to meet his sister, and she doesn't want to because, of course, it'll blow her cover, that she's not really an adult fashion icon, but rather a 17-year-old. And the dialogue goes as such. You're just pissed because I don't want to meet your sister. Her boyfriend, Brian. Who cares about my sister? I just said she's in a slump because of this backstabber at her work. Sue Ellen. Why do you keep calling this girl a backstabber? Maybe she's nice, Brian. Why you gotta be so judgmental of her? Brian. Sue Ellen, what's going on? Are you seeing someone else? Because that's what this sounds like. How does that sound like she's seeing someone else, you insecure guy? <laughs> like, that's way too insecure and jealous. If her standing up for some random worker she doesn't even... doesn't know... Makes you think she's cheating. What else makes you think she's cheating? Hey, why do you keep going to the bathroom? Did you just drink too much or are you seeing another guy in there? When the real Paul Rudd comes out, then she'll cheat on you. 
seriously, he was one of those guys leading up to the invention of Paul Rudd. I, I, I see what you're saying there. Yeah. But seriously, like, are you that kind of guy that if you guys get married, every time you come home, you're going to look in closets and under under the bed and everything? Cause where is he? Cheating? Where is he hiding, you whore? Where, where, where is he? Okay, he's not under the chair. You switched to chicken and a biscuit? Are you whore! cheating on me? <laughs> The, yeah. the kind of thing she's like, hey, honey, we're out of milk. I'm going to go to the store. At 4 o'clock in the afternoon? What is going on here? You're a little too suspicious, Brian. Every time she says I'm on top of that Rose, you think she's on top of Rose cheating on you with her? Ew. I would. Ew. Hey, Rose used to be a hottie. But now she was old. She looked a little awkward, but she's still a hottie. I'd be on top of that Rose. Dude, it's not like you. Ha there's a lot of women you wouldn't be on top of if you had the chance. <laughs> yeah. Like you'd be on top of Rosie O'Donnell if you got the chance. No. 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 Yeah. yeah. You want to get east of that, Eden. Oh, God. Dude, why did you have to... Ugh. As many horror movies didn't give you nightmares, that scene did. What gave me nightmares was her as Betty Rubble. <laughs> but, back to this. Yeah. Brian, you're too insecure to have a girlfriend. Okay? Get a little bit more secure. Then try dating somebody as hot as Christina Applegate was. Yeah, sometimes it's something completely innocent, like pretending your babysitter didn't die. And hiding her body. And being a career mom when you're supposed to be, you know, a teenager. Yeah. Harmless. And stealing petty cash. Yeah. And your sister was a bitch. For our next, really, what's a good plate with nothing on it? Oh, I messed that up. No, that was the line. I know how we can get Kenny out. Sweet. So weed. Does your really have something to do with half-baked? Half because I'm sure whatever really we are coming up with is supposed to be in there. Yeah, it does. Okay, my really from half-baked. In 1966's Batman... I know it's supposed to be a comedy, but he calls up asking about the missing warhead. And the, the general, colonel, whatever that guy was in the army, is like, oh, I sold that. And he goes, and did you get the name of the man who sold it to? And he goes, oh no, Batman, I didn't. I didn't do anything wrong, did I? Batman's response. Next time you sell a nuclear warhead, be sure to get a name. What? Really? This isn't Baghdad. Okay. I know that in the 60s they could get away with some weird stuff in movies, but... I'm pretty sure you don't buy nuclear warheads straight from the army. I doubt they would sell them. And if they did to another country, not an individual, but a country, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of paperwork and stuff that has to go into that. So in the 60s, people bought it that somebody could just go up to the army base and go like, hey, got any uh, nuclear warheads? I'm trying to beef up the home security. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to buy an A-bomb. Don't worry, I'm not going to drop it on Hiroshima. You already did. Okay, my neighbor <laughs> is... Constantly mowing their lawn at like 2 o'clock in, in the morning. Do you got any anthrax? And then How much for the little girl? <laughs> and then they didn't even get the name. Like Again, if they ever sold something like that to a country, I'm pretty sure they'd have a list of names. Oh, yeah. And and birth dates and background checks and all that stuff. I, I don't think they're just going to be like, well, it's not my business what he needs the nuclear warhead for. Kind of is. So the Little Mermaid, really... And don't tell mom's babysitter that she's dead. Really. Josh, we've talked about this. You do not get to outro it when you're drunk. I'm not drunk. I'm, I'm social. You're kidding. So there you have it. Don't be that suspicious of your girlfriend, no matter how hot she is. And... Just don't sell nuclear warheads. His girlfriend was selling nuclear warheads? They are done. Hope you guys enjoyed this edition of 
really. And if you did, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notifications when we post videos, and leave a comment. I'm right on top of that, Rose. Love you guys.